How is it going? So this video is going to be about data ingestion from on-prem SQL Server to Azure. So I've drawn this uh, data pipeline map to show you uh, how we can go about ingesting data from uh, SQL Server to Azure. So um, in the first uh, step we have the SQL Server Management Studio, which is located on your local machine or a private virtual mas machine. So we have the data in SQL Server, right? And you, what you want to do is basically ingest the data to Azure Data Lake, right? So what you need to do is create and integration runtime on Azure. So integration runtime basically allow you to allow data movement and dispatch activities. That there are different activities in Azure Data Factory. We have a copy activity which copy data from one source to another. We have a DataBricks activity. You have a uh, HD insights, your data flow, different activities that um, you can create on Azure. So you, you create an integration runtime. In this case, since you want to ingest data from on-prem to Azure, you have to create a self-hosted integration runtime. So once you create the, create the integration runtime, um, install it on your um, on-prem uh, machine, it could be a private virtual machine or your local machine. So you install that self-hosted integration runtime. And once you've done that, then you can basically create a copy activity on Azure Data Factory. So that copy activity will basically uh, have a link service that point to the, uh, the SQL Server where you want to uh, get the data from. So um, from there, you can copy the data to Azure Data Lake. And another way of doing this is by using Azure Synapse Workspace. So you can create an Azure Synapse Workspace to achieve the same uh, result. So once you get your data in Azure Data Lake, also before you get the data, I mean, once you get the data in Azure Data Lake, you can uh, read the data and do some transformation on the data using Databricks, right? So the Databricks activity is also available in Azure Data Factory. So you can basically create a pipeline for that. So once you have your process data in Azure Data Lake, you can make use of Power BI to visualize the data. So now, um, if I come here, this is what the integration runtime looks like when you install it locally. So when you create create an integration runtime on Azure, you will have some. You will be provided some key, and you basically need to um, um, copy and paste the key here, and then basically. Uh, launch the uh, integration runtime locally, basically connect it to your Azure cloud. So um, then, so the Azure Data Factory basically focuses on data integration, transformation, and pipeline orchestration that different sources, you know, support. And it mainly uh, created for ETL and ELT processes. And when it comes to Azure Synapse, it's mainly for data integration, big data analytics and data warehouses. So Synapse, you can, in Synapse, you can use a, a dedicated, dedicated SQL pool or you can create a Spark pool. So it basically support the, both the graphic user interface as well as the coding. So if, if you want to do the graphic user interface and coding, so you can, uh, make use of uh, Synapse, but if you don't know a lot more about coding, you can make use of uh, Azure, Azure Data Factory. So, and um, Azure Data, uh, Synapse 
has Power BI integrated with it, so that comes in handy. And so this is what the pipeline looks like, right? So, um, I mean, I've used uh, uh, Azure Data Factory in, in most of my projects, right? So I kind of prefer it to Azure Synapse Analytics, but you know, there are a lot of uh, benefits in Azure Synapse uh, workspace, right? So, um, in Azure Data Factory, you can make use of database, which is uh, basically provides some flexibility when it comes to data processing. There are lots of cluster uh, series you can choose from. Either you want to use a general purpose cluster or memory optimized or compute optimized cluster or storage optimized cluster. So there are a lot of options in Azure database. But and in Azure Synapse, what I've seen is they have the memory optimized uh, uh, cluster, uh, cluster type. So, um, so now in terms of Azure Data Factory pipeline, you can create this copy activity and to copy the data from on-prem to uh, Azure Data Factory. And in the same run, you can read the data from Azure Data Factory in Databricks, process the data, write it back to Azure Data Factory. So this will basically uh, do a complete um, data ingestion and data transformation for you. So now as a data, you can create containers. You can call a container or raw container, and you can call another container a data or greater container. So the raw container will basically have your raw data and the curated container will have your process data and from uh, and you can connect your uh, power bi to uh, the um, uh, azure data lake to basically get the data from the uh, curated container and visualize the data so this is just like some differences between the on-premise versus uh, 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 Azure Data Factory extraction transform load processes, right? So in terms of on-premise, you need to do uh, uh, some server management, but Azure Data Factory is, uh, is serverless. So these are just some differences between them, right? So um, now um, I want to show you the um, Azure Data Factory. So, um, so this is the storage, right? Um, this is called a raw container. The data is ingested into raw container. I've actually, I've actually uh, deleted the data. So what I will do is I'll try and trigger this um, um, pipeline again. So if I add trigger here. I hope it's working. Let me see if my database cluster is running. So, okay, the cluster is running. So basically this is what uh, the transformation that the database is doing. So the first thing you need to make sure of is um, that your, um, you are able to read from Azure Data Lake. So you need to provide this configuration of actually created a a a key vault so and the purpose of the key vault is basically to store my secret key like client secret application id directory id so you need to create an application id um so from application id uh you have the service principle right um service principle id uh, you will have the directory id then you can create a key vault so if i go to um if i go to it if i go back so this is the key vault right um where is it this is the key vault so basically you need to store all the secrets in the key vault right but I'm not going to show you that. So uh, once you store the secret in the keyboard, you need to uh, basically create a key, key scope on DataBridge. I've made a video on this, so you can check that one out. Um, 
So once you have this uh, uh, set up, then you can uh, have them and make use of them here when you are basically setting up the Spark configuration to read from Azure Data Lake. So, um, so once that is set up, you will be able to uh, read the uh, data, right? And here I'm writing the final data and partitioning it by the current day to the uh, Azure Data Lake. Let me check the data factory. Okay, it says the pipelines succeeded. Now you can see the copy activity is done, then the database transform transformation has completed. So if I go back to the storage, and if I check this again, now, okay, let me go back, this is not the one. Okay, this is the raw data. So if I refresh it, now we copy the organization data from on-prem server. Let me try and open my on-prem server. So, so um, say SQL Server Management Studio. So, um, this is the data that we copy from the uh, SQL Server organization, and we've um, have basically used um, uh, DataBridge to transform the data and write it to this directory. You can see this data was written on the 21st uh, of February, which is this date, right? So um, this is the time, which is the time that the job succeeded, right? So this is how you can create the pipeline. Just copy the data from your uh, uh, on-prem SQL server and um, move the data to your um, Azure Data Lake, and you can do some transformation. So this is what the data looks like in uh, the management studio, SQL Server management studio. So if I go, this is the data. So if I so this is what the data looks like. Now if I go to the data breaks, I, um. So this is what the data looks like in database. So you can see here, um, I'm putting, adding a new column called current date. If I run this code now, the current date will be today. So, but um, I haven't run it directly here. So that's why it's not showing. But it's been run on this pipeline. Um, that is why on in the storage, uh, it's showing the current date is cut to today's date because we partition it by the current date. That's why we have that. Yeah, so that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Have a lovely day and goodbye.